Welcome to Computing at Home with Digital Schoolhouse. My name is Estelle, otherwise known as ComSci Geek. I am a computing teacher and I also develop resources for the programme. We specialise in delivering computing workshops that are accessible, educational and fun. You are watching part two of our App in a Day workshop. Both parts of this workshop are unplugged, meaning that you don't need any tech to take part. Just a device to watch the video. We recommend that you complete part one before attempting part two. Don't worry if you missed it, you can watch any of our previously streamed workshops on our YouTube channel. Just search YouTube for Digital Schoolhouse. To all learners watching, remember you can pause the video at any time to take notes, collect your thoughts or take part in the workshop alongside me. The Digital Schoolhouse team are ready and waiting in the chat should you have any questions throughout. I'll also be taking five minutes to answer your questions at the end of the workshop. Parents and guardians, you might want to watch the next bit as it explains how to access our resources, but after that, feel free to sit, it, um, sit nearby to supervise, or you can even join in if you want to. Let's get started. So for today's workshop, all you're going to need is the worksheets from last lesson. So if you haven't got the uh, worksheets from last session, then go and grab them now, because you will need them. Um, you're also going to need um, a copy of today's worksheet. So the worksheets that you're going to need today as I said, our last session's worksheets. So you're going to need everything that you worked on last time. So you've got your app in a day design sheet, you've got your user profile, you've got your initial ideas, and you've got your app review worksheets as well. You'll need all of those. Um, you're also going to need these sheets for today, which are the actual design sheets. So we've got two of those to work through. Um, alongside that, you're going to need some coloured pens or pencils. And I, I would also suggest that you have um, some paper and some pens or pencils as well for today's workshops. As usual, if you don't have access to a printer, then you can work everything on paper if you prefer. OK, so let me just quickly show you where to find everything in the uh, for the workshop on our website. And then we'll be able to kick off together. Okay, so to access our resources, as usual, you head on over to the Digital Schoolhouse website. That is digitalschoolhouse.org.uk. That's digitalschoolhouse.org.uk. Go to the resources tab, click on live workshops. Scroll down the page and find app in a day. If you're watching this on YouTube, you may need to go further down the page. Just be aware of that. Go to where it says app in a day. And you'll need to access the live app in a day worksheets, which are at the bottom of the public files. OK, so it's just this one here that you'll need to access. And the sheets that you'll need for this for part two of today's workshop is the two at the very end. So pages eight and nine, I believe. So just bear with me a minute while I scroll to the bottom. You'll need yeah pages eight and nine, the paper prototype and also the oops, went a bit too far there, the app design sheet. So those are the two things that you're going to need for today's workshop. So make sure you've got those handy, or as I said earlier, if you don't have access to a printer, that's fine. Make sure you've got some um, paper to work on for today's workshop. I would also recommend you have some paper, even if you have got access to a printer today, because um, there's a little bit that we're gonna do on paper as well. So make sure you've got all those bits ready to hand so that we're able to work together on part two of App in a Day. Okay, so this is part two of our App in a Day workshop and today we are going to be looking at the structure of an app and how to apply this to your own design. We're going to be look at how, looking at how to design your app prototype around the needs of your user and we're going to have a little bit of a look at how we can select and use digital schools, sorry, digital tips. What is wrong with me today? I apologise. Um, and we're also going to be looking at uh, selecting and using digital tools to prepare a pitch. So what we're going to be doing first is having a look at a final design and thinking about what our app is actually going to look like. So think about your findings, including the reviews of the apps on, um, the, uh, on the App Store or on the Play Store, depending on what you used. Um, you're going to make a, some final decisions. You're going to complete some final designs. And this might include drawings of your screens, list of features, images that you're going to use and a diagram to show the different app screens and how they connect to each other. So 
it's really important that you understand what we're actually doing. So we're going to be creating a prototype. But what is a prototype? It's an early sample or model of something that has been built to design and test a concept or idea. And you can see in this picture, this is an example of a prototype that then became a real toy that you could play with. OK, so we're going to be making a paper prototype of our app, which is actually how designers will come up with some ideas for um, apps um, in the initial stages when they're first planning things out. So how can we create a prototype of our app? We're going to be using the app prototyping worksheet to create a simple pro paper prototype. And then we're going to be thinking about how this engages our user. And we're going to think about uh, that step by step. And we're going to add information as input and, and uh, think about how we're going to get data as outputs, how we're going to take decisions, etc. And this is an example of a paper prototype. So this is what we're going to be doing to start with with our worksheets. So I'm going to hop over onto the worksheets now and we're going to start to think about how we're going to develop our paper prototype. So this is the ideas that we came up with last time. So it's a good idea to go back and just have a look at your design sheet because it will really help you to identify what things that need to go into your design. So that is what we're going to be looking at to start with. So let's have a close look at what we talked about last time. So you might remember um, I went for Pitch Pals as the um, app that I'm going to be creating, but you might have chosen something different. That's absolutely fine. As we discussed last time, um, you could pick from 10 different ideas and you hopefully have chosen one of those as the app that you want to develop further. So here we have the um, initial ideas that I had for my Pitch Pals um, app. So I decided it was going to be animal based, that the user can choose their own animal, that there's a cartoon to show whether uh, the note that they played is pitched too high or too low, because if you remember my Pitch Pals app was a app for tuning your instrument, but it was uh, aimed at children. Um, and then I had a few different bits of uh, feedback and improvements I'd made based on some of the activities that we did last time. So I had some feedback improvements because I realised that I needed a screen to select what instrument was being played and I needed to have an animal and um, that was going to hold up cards to show whether it was too high, too low or just right. Um, and then I also did a bit of research into existing apps and when I did that I realised a few different things that I wanted to include. So I decided that I needed to have something that allowed the user to change the actual design of the app a little bit, so perhaps changing the backgrounds and things like that. I wanted to make sure I had touch controls um, so it was really easy to use and I decided I didn't want any push notifications. So push notifications are the things that pop up on your screen and I realised that actually wasn't relevant at all to a tuning app because I mean why would you want it to tell you or maybe you can have a reminder I suppose to remind you you need to practice but I didn't really think it was relevant so I decided I wouldn't include that. So that's what I came up with in my app in a day design sheet. I would also suggest that you go back and have a look at your user profile as well, because this is really important for starting to come up with your design ideas. So in my user profile, I had Lola. She was in year five um, and she gets frustrated if things are too hard to use. So that's really important. But she's used to using technology at school, so it's not completely new to her. So she wanted it to be easy to use. Um, the, the visual um, design of it needed to be really obvious so she knew what to do. It needed to be bright and fun to look at and she wanted something fun to use. So that's the things I needed to make sure I needed to include in the design of my app. And finally, there was my initial ideas about um, the kind of people that would be using my app. So it was gonna be for boys and girls. So although my target user that I've done a um, user profile for is a girl, I need to make sure that I don't alienate boys. Um, alienate, alienate means make something that's not appropriate for them at all. So. Um, I don't want to make it like, not that it would necessarily be too girly if it was pink, but I might want to steer away from things that are traditionally girls. So I would want to make it something that's quite um, universal that everyone will enjoy. And, and they're going to be playing an instrument. So that is where I got to with my initial ideas. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab my design sheet and I'm going to start to lay out some ideas for my app. So the first one, I would suggest is going to be the very first screen that comes up when you um, start your game, uh, start your app. So I'm going to grab some colours and I'm going to start to put some designs in for this. So I think probably the first thing I'm going to need 
is some buttons that let you select different things. So I'm going to have a button that lets you select your instrument. There we go. Okay, instrument. I'm going to have a button that lets you um, change the background. And I think that's all, but I'm going to pop in like a little logo underneath. And the logo is going to be the name of the app, which is Pitch Pals. And I'm going to go for like a little paw print like that. So there's my Pitch Pals um, first, pay, uh, first load screen, which has got like the menu so I know where I'm going from there. I'm going to add a bit of colour to this. So as I said in my initial ideas, I wanted to make it quite colourful. So it was quite fun and interesting and um, would be quite attractive to the person selecting things. I'm going to purposely make different colours for my buttons. Now the reason I'm doing that is because one of the things that it said in my user profile was that it needed to be really obvious. If I go back to my user profile, there it is. She said that she needed it to be really obvious, the visuals and how to use it to be really obvious. So one of the reasons I'm doing two different colours for the buttons is because that way, if she's using it, say, with her mum or dad, they could say, oh, you need to pick the red button or you need to pick the blue button. So that's what my thinking is behind that, because that makes it easier to use for the person that's just learning how to use it. I'm also going to grab a pen as well and just add a little bit more um, detail so you can actually see what it says. So I've kind of lost it when I've written in there. So instrument, and that one says background. My buttons weren't quite big enough for my text, never mind. Um, I'm going to then add some yellow behind as my background colour. Okay, so there is my first screen of my Pitch Pals app. So then I'm going to start to think about where I'm going from there. So um, I'm going to do this one here, so the instrument. So I'm going to do a little arrow showing me that this is going to be the screen that comes up having selected the instrument button. Um, apologies if you can hear me moving my chair around. I'm just going to move my stool so I can sit in front of the uh, visualizer, make it a little bit easier to work and put some more design in. So the next thing we're going to do is the options that you can choose between for the different instruments. Now, I think to make this a bit more fun, it'd be quite nice to have little uh, pictures of the instruments that you can select between rather than having um, buttons. I think that'd be quite nice. So let's do um, a choice of a couple of instruments that I can actually draw. Um, I think we'll have um, a choice of, hopefully you can tell what this is. <laughs> um, this is going to be a choice of a trumpet. There we go. Or a, let's go for a flute, that's quite easy to draw. There is the choices of the couple of instruments. Um, presumably in the design you might be able to scroll down and select other instruments. Um, but in this initial idea I'm not going to worry about that too much. I'm going to colour those in as well. So you can select which instrument that you want from those options. And again, uh, we're going to colour that in. Um, let's do a little bit of text as well. Maybe it will just say select. Oops. I've made a right mess there, haven't I, with my spelling? <laughs> let's actually say select your instrument. And then I'm going to add some colour to the background. And I think I'm going to keep it with this nice yellow background because I quite like that. Now, I've just demonstrated why you should really do things in pencil first time. Because if I'd done it in pencil, I could have rubbed it out and corrected it. But I didn't. I did it in pen and then I'd made a mistake. So I'm sure I, that you probably realise that it's much better to work in pencil first time. Um, I'm also going to pop in the corner. I'm going to make the little paw print 
almost like a little mini logo that we use. So we've got the full logo here and like a smaller one here. So select your instrument, so that, that one. And then the next thing we're going to have is the um, the design that comes up where you can then um, get it to, uh, to allow you to tune your instrument. So we're going to do this based on, I should do in pencil, like I said I would. Uh, we'll do it on the trumpet. Okay, so it will come up with a screen to tell you to play your instrument, so it should be really obvious again. And it's going to say, Uh, play now If you do need to pause the video because you want to spend a bit longer on any of these screens do feel free and Just be aware that you need to just wind it back and then catch up with us from where you left off um, You might need to look up what your instrument looks like as well that's absolutely fine so just feel free if you do need to do that so as usual bit of text so you play your instrument now we're going to make that nice yellow background again And we're going to pop in that little logo, our Puppet Powers logo, there we go, so play now. And then once we've played the note, there's like three choices. So this could go one of three ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do little arrows to show you that there's three choices. So one, two, or three. This is going to be one, this is going to be two, and this is going to be three. So if you remember, if I go back again to my initial ideas, not my initial ideas, my um, design ideas, is this one, there's my design sheet. Um, I had this idea that I'd have my little animal that popped up and you could select, so it wouldn't select, it would show you whether your note was too high, too low or just right. Um, and I changed, made a change based on feedback that instead of having him holding um, the like the arrows or doing a thumbs up it would hold they would hold a card with that thing on it so that's what I'm going to do next so that's why there are three uh, possible outcomes from playing this so the input for this particular part is that there's going to be a note played and it's going to go via the microphone on the um, phone and it will then output to three different screens based on whether that note is um, too high too low or just right so that is what I'm going to do next. So let's see, I'm going to attempt to draw my uh, little cat friend again. And hopefully it will still look okay. So I've got my little cat friend. And this is going to be the too high option. So there we go. Got some little ivy and a little nose. There we go. And he's obviously going to be holding it. So there's the too high option. Um, we've got the option that it's going to be a note that's a little bit too low. Pop him in there. There we go, and then finally we've got the just right, which is the thumbs up. So we'll do the little cat down here. And it's gonna be little thumbs up hopefully that looks like a thumbs up there we go right so we have too high too low the thumbs up to say that it's just right let's add a bit of color um, I'm gonna have my little cat coming in a little bit 
It's keeping the same, it's the same cap. Good. She's going to have a little white chest, I think. There we go. Obviously, your designs are going to look a little bit different to mine. That's absolutely fine. There we go. Oh, you obviously need some whiskers because cats have whiskers. Oops, you've not been in your holes. There we go. There we are. And I'm going to use that yellow background that I've used everywhere else. I think this one looks a bit like a beaver. I'm not quite how I managed to do that. But hopefully you get the idea, my little cats. And I'm going to pop in that little logo that I've used everywhere else. Little puppet, um, little pitch pals. Paw print. There we go. Now, the next thing we've got is the background one. So I'm going to pop in an arrow to show you that that's the one I'm going to be doing the screen having clicked on this button. And what we're going to have is it's going to give me four options to choose between four um, different backgrounds. Now, I think I'm going to do what I said and use pencil so I don't make a mistake like spelling select wrong like I did earlier. And I'm going to do choose your background. And then there's going to be just four choices. I think I'm going to keep it quite simple. It's going to be four choices of different colours that you can select between. Okay, and I'm going to choose, I've got the yellow that I've got already. Let's go for a blue. Um, and we're going to have, let's go for red. Or... Let's go for a nice green colour, I think. Excuse me rummaging around in my pencil case. There we go, or green. That's the choices you can choose between. And obviously, because it's already got yellow at the moment, it would be in yellow. Now, obviously I'm not gonna do all the different choices for this, because I don't think it's actually worth it, but just to show what would happen, let's say that the person has selected the uh, let's go for the red option. So if they've selected the red option, um, let's have, uh, do you want to keep it? And then we're going to give them the options of yes or no, those little buttons. And obviously this is going to show what it looks like with the red background. And the buttons will be different colours. But again, going with the theme of the bright colours. There we go. Yes or no. You might pop a little bit of pen over the top of those so you can actually see the letters. And then if they say yes, it would then just go back to that home screen. If they say no, it would go back to here. Now, you don't have to fill in every single one of these um, uh, the blank prototype phone screens. Um, if you've managed to do everything that you need to in less, that's fine. If you find that you've not quite finished, then that's also fine and just give yourself um, a bit of time to finish that off. So if you do need to pop on the pause button now, so feel free if you do need to pause right now to finish off your designs. But if you're ready to move on with me, then I'm going to be moving on now. So decide what you need to do. If you need a bit more time, pause the stream now. Otherwise, we're going to carry on. So there is my design idea that I've got. Right, the next thing I'm going to do before I move any further is I'm going to draw something called a top-down design 
for what I've come up with. Now this is really useful for demonstrating and thinking about the hierarchy, that sounds really posh, hierarchy, um, which is like the, so where things, what order things go in um, for the app and how things link together. So this is really, really useful for that. So what we do this, with this is we draw a little box to represent each of our screens. So the first screen in my design is this home screen. So I'm just gonna put home. Now out of home, I can either go into my instrument select, so there's my instrument select, or I can go into my background selector. There you go. And then from my instrument select, I've got my different choices. Now in my one, I've just had two choices to keep it quite simple, but in yours, you might have more options to choose between, it's up to you. I'm gonna pop three choices on my um, top down design, just because I've got a bit more space to work and I feel like I can do that. So I'm gonna pop three different options in here. So I've got my, um, if I got there, I've got a flute, I've got, there we go, a trumpet, and I'm also going to add in a violin as my third option. Now, all three of these are actually going to go to this Play Now screen. So we're going to do a little of joining up the different um, connectors to show that these all connect to one screen, which is the, um, this is, I'm not gonna call it the play now screen because it's not really actually what it is. It's going to be the um, uh, note input because that's what they're doing here. They're actually inputting the note that they're gonna be playing. So note input, and then from that, we have the three choices, which is too high, too low, just right. And those are three separate options again, so. Too high. Just right. And my last one, which is too low. Now, apart from the just right, these two, if they go to those screens, they should wait a certain amount of time and then go back to the note input because actually, if the note the person's played is too high or too low, we want them to play it again until they get the note correct. So we're gonna pop in a little loop that takes that screen back to the note input and the same with the too low because otherwise you're going to be stuck down here with a note that's not correct um, but you have no way of actually making it correct so we want it to loop back up to the note input to test to see if the note's correct and keep going in that loop between those two until it, the note is just right okay once it gets to that stage you probably don't need to have anything else. You might just have an option to close the app because you might not need anything else. So I'm gonna have one extra screen, which I didn't include on my design, so I'm gonna add that in there, which is gonna be close app. Okay. Now, the other thing I did was my background selector. So on my background selector, I've got the, let's have another look on my screen, on my um, design. And my background selector goes to this screen here, which is uh, four different choices. So based on the color that the person selected. So I've got my red, I've got my blue, I've got, let's have a look what else I've got. I've got red, I've got blue, I've got green, and I've got yellow. Um, I've run out a little bit out of space. I'm going to have to do it a little bit strangely, but hopefully you've got enough space to do this in. Uh, I'm going to put yellow in there. 
and then I also have green. So those are the different ones. So those are the, the different options and this is these all go to one of this. Do you want to keep it? Yes or no? And so if they say um, yes, all of these will go back to the home page. So we're going to have like a decision here. So if it's a yes, they're all going to loop back up. I'm going to go up like that into the home page and we can do like that to show that they all loop back into that. And that's if they are yes. But if it, the answer is no, they're all going to go back into that background selector. And I'm going to move these ones around this way. There we go. Okay, and then those are no's there. There we go. Okay, you could probably do this a little bit clearer than I can. So if you've got a bit more space to work in, um, that could be a lot easier to read because it's a little bit messy. So there we go, I've got my background selector where you can choose the different colours and it takes them back to the home. And I've got this lovely diagram showing me the instruments that you can choose between, then it goes to the, the note input and then it outputs whether it's too high, just right or too low. Um, and it gives an option to close the app if they've got it just right. So I'm just gonna add my close app screen. So this is coming as a result of the just right. So if they've got it just right, it's going to go automatically. It might wait a certain number of seconds. So let's pop that in there as well. So it might say, wait five seconds. And then it will go to the, do you want to quit? And then we're going to use our yes or no again, I think. And if it's yes, the app will close. If it's no, it will take us back to that home page again. Eee, back into there. Okay, and again, a little bit of colour. So this was all based on the yellow background, wasn't it? So I put the yellow background in. And I'm going to colour my buttons in. Let's go for a red no button. And a green yes there you have it so I've added an extra screen having done my diagram right so there we go so there is my initial design sheet and my top-down design that I've designed to show how my different parts of my app link link together hopefully you've done that with me if you need a bit more time as usual pop the pause button now and take your time just to finish off your designs and join me in a moment if you need to do that. Otherwise, if you're ready to move straight on, then that's what we're going to be doing next and having a look at how we're going to take this idea further. So pop the pause button if you need to. If you don't need to, carry on with me straight away as we start to look at the next part of our workshop. Okay, so. What I'd like you to do next having completed your um, design ideas. Um, I'd like you to do a little bit of um, presenting on what you've done so far. So this might be a case of you being able to do a bit of presenting to the person who you're with at home. Or if you don't have that option, I'm gonna talk to you about something that you could do that's slightly different if that is um, more easy for you to do while you're working at home. So what I'd like to do is briefly explain what you're doing and your progress. And then use your findings that you've done so far to improve your prototype. So this is going to be basically research, but it's going to be research based around um, getting somebody else to give you some feedback on your design ideas so far. So what I'd like you to do is take your design ideas, um, maybe your um, hierarchy as well, but definitely your design sheet and talk it through with the person that you're with at home and explain to them what's going on in each of the screens and how the different screens link together. That's where your hierarchy sheet might come in, your top-down design might come in to help you to explain how everything links together. Then I want you to listen really carefully to what feedback they give you based on what you've done. Okay, you might want to make some notes on top of it to explain what things they've suggested to you need to be changed to make it work better. 
and um, you can actually add those ideas onto the de design sheet itself and I'll come on to that in just a moment. If you don't have the option of going through this with somebody at home, that's absolutely fine. What you can do instead is actually do a little bit of research and see how well your design sits with um, some existing um, apps that are already out there. So we did a little bit of this previously. So you might already have some um, design ideas based around what is already out there because you did your review worksheet, okay? So you could go back to those if you've got them, or if you don't feel there's enough detail on there, or it doesn't quite explain what you've looked at now, having actually start to think about what the design is going to look like, what you might prefer to do is hop back onto the internet, go back to the app store, or whatever um, your preferred app shop is, <laughs> wasn't sure how to describe that. Um, I'm going to go to the App Store. Um, so you can take your pick of App Store or um, Play.com, whichever you want to do. And just have another look at some apps that do whatever it is that your app is going to do. And just compare it to what you've come up with. So I'm going to do a quick search for um, a tuner. And hopefully get some ideas. Oh, no, nope, nothing in that one. We'll go back and just, I think maybe I've searched the Apple Store website rather than the, the app website. Um, I might not have gone where I meant to. Let's see, I want to go to the App Store. There we go. Um, normally, I can have a look at some examples, but for some reason, it's not coming up today. Let's see if there's another way of doing this. Um, I'm just going to go back to my list of search items and see if I've got one that works better. Uh, there we go, this is the, actually the App Store. That's their app on the App Store. And then what I actually had was the tuner, because I found one of the tuners on here. Let's, let's try one more time. Let's actually search for the tuner that I had as an example last time, um, because it, you probably didn't see it in a lot of detail. It's tuner light. Let's see if I can find it that way. If not, there it is. Okay, so it's coming up properly now. So if I go into one of these different ones, there's simply tuner. I want to use one of these different ones. It's a bit different. Um, this lets you tune just a violin or cello, and then it gives you a little bit of the um, design of the app as well. So you can have a little look at what the app's going to actually look like. So we can see it gives us a really simple um, screen that it goes straight to. You can select between the different instruments here and then it tells you whether it's slightly high or slightly low. And that's that speaker mode that on ours, we've got it, it comes up with play now, so you know what you're meant to do. Um, and it always gives you a bit of an instruction as well, which is quite nice and a little bit different to this one. So is there anything from this that I want to add into my design? So this is the option. If you can't go through what you've done with somebody at home, maybe they're busy at the moment, um, that's what you could do instead. Go and have a look at some examples on the App Store or on the Play Store and just compare them to what you've done and see if there's anything that you think that you have missed out. Now, how, looking at this, because I've got no one to talk to at the moment because I'm in my... Um, my little studio and I'm not able to talk to anyone about my design um, I can see that one of the things that I haven't included on my design is what string or what note is actually being played and I think actually that, that's something that needs to be there um, because it makes it a lot easier for the person that is um, tuning so that's something that I think I need to include so I'm going to go on to my design and I'm going to add some notes in to describe what changes I need to make so on here, I think it should actually tell them what note they should be playing. So it doesn't just say play now, but it might say play a string now or whatever. Um, the other thing that I think would be quite nice is as well as having the option for tune change in the background, I'd like to also be able to change the character. So we want a character change screen. So I'm actually going to add a design for that here. Oops. And it's going to just say, choose your character. 
like that and we're going to have a similar thing to what I did with the different colours but they're going to just be the little pictures so I'm going to have my little cat I'm going to have let's see, see if my drawings look good enough I'm going to have a little chick or a duck or something along those lines um what else shall I have um I should probably have a little pony because I'm a little bit obsessed with them to be honest so there's a little pony um, and some eyes as well there we go and last let's have it needs to be something that doesn't look too similar to other things I've drawn I could draw a dog but I'm worried that it won't look quite right well I'll have a go I'll do a, a dog this way around though there you go oh not too bad okay so those are my little characters select screen that you can choose between the different animals so that means if I have that screen as well there needs to be an extra button in here or I need to make a slight change to what I've got there and maybe add an extra screen in where you can choose between whether you're going to do a character select or background select um, so what I think I'm going to do is, where's my pen there is, I'm going to change it, so instead of having background it's going to say options, so change button to say oops, options, and then I'm going to need extra um, screen for um, choosing between background or character select there we go so that's what I need as well so there gives me an extra little bit to work with okay so there is my app design sheet with some notes on things that I've changed to make it a little bit more user friendly either based on some actual feedback from someone if I have the option of doing that or by looking at um, my um, research of existing apps. So depending on what's appropriate for you, you can play around with which one works best. Okay, so well done. That is our design sheet complete. Let's have a look at what we're going to do next. Okay, so we have explained what we're doing and thought about our progress. Hopefully you've had a bit of a discussion that with, with someone at home or if you haven't been able to discuss it with someone, you've actually thought about it yourself and made a really good um, conscious decision about what works well and what perhaps needs to be improved slightly. And then you've used either your research from talking to other people or your research from looking at existing apps to improve your prototype and you've made some notes on that. So what we're going to do finally is we're going to do our final designs now. So this is where you get to do that very last sheet, that paper prototype sheet. Um, and actually come up with exactly what your app is going to look like as a final design. So this is our very last bit um, and we are going to use this as part of our pitch. So you'll need to think in quite a lot of detail and make it look really nice and neat and tidy as you're working through this one. So um, I'm going to use my design sheet as reference to remind me what everything needs to look like and also what things I've decided to change. And you might find as you go through, there are a few bits that you decide to change because perhaps it doesn't work quite as well as you expected it or having had some feedback from someone, they've told you that that bit doesn't quite work. So either way is absolutely fine. So discuss with the person that you perhaps have talked to about your ideas, if there's anything that needs to be changed as you're going along. Otherwise, you can just go from what you've uh, highlighted as the changes in your app design sheet. So let's go with it with mine. So I've got my Pitch Pals logo. There we go. In fact, I'm going to pop my Pitch Pals paw print logo into every screen because that's going to become a little bit of what I call what, what is known as um, house style. That means it's like your branding. It's what it's going to be something that people recognise as being something that's specific to you as a company. Um, and that sometimes I don't know if you've seen I've noticed this before, but there's lots of companies that use brand house styles like this. So, for example, you might have noticed that McDonald's has a particular colour red and a particular colour yellow, and they have that M that they use. So um, 
most companies have some sort of branding and house style and you will notice it as you start to uh, look more de in more detail at design. Next thing we're going to do is going to pop those buttons in. So I still have my instrument select, which is just a button. Like that. Managed to fit the whole word in this time. Um, and as I said in my um, changes, I was going to change the button to say options. So instead of saying background, it now says options like so um, I'm still I'm working in pencil because then if I make a mistake I can rub it out as I discussed earlier then I have from my instrument select I'm gonna do an arrow to show you I have my page where you can select between the different instruments um, I'm gonna have a go at drawing a violin on my design here um, let's see Hopefully I've got space to draw everything. There we go, let's pop in the chin rest. There's my violin. I'm going to have a flute. And I'm also going to have the trumpet. There we go. Okay, and we're going to have a bit of text that says select. Oops, what is it about the word select to me? I keep spelling it wrong today. Um, but as I said earlier, I was going to work in pencil, so if I made any mistakes, I could actually rub it out. So I'm just going to grab my rubber and rub that out so it actually says the right thing. So this is why it's always a good idea to work in pencil in case you make any silly mistakes. So let's pop that in, select your, um, I'm going to put instrument in there, I think, oh can I fit it in there, it doesn't quite fit in, but I think in my actual design, in my if I did this properly on digital design, I'd move them down a little bit, so select your instrument, and then once you've chosen an instrument, it's going to tell you what note to play. So it's going to say play and then it gives you the note. Let's go for A. Play A. Obviously, this is going to be very different depending on your app. So play A now. Then after that, I have the um, the feedback to the user telling them whether their note's in tune or not. So I'm going to do, I might do my pony option this time, because I can draw him a little bit better than I can draw the cat. Having said that, I'll probably do a really terrible job now. There we go, and he's going to be holding. So this is going to be too high. He's going to hold that. Obviously horses have hooves, so it's going to have little hooves holding it. There we go. Quite enjoying this. I like drawing different things. There we go. Um, he might also show you the down arrow card if your note is too low. Oh, it covers who's in there. Do that as well. There we go. And if the note is just right, he will show you the thumbs up. There we go. Thumbs up. See his little hooves holding the, the card. There we go. Okay, so after that, we have the now we can have a slightly different thing, aren't we? Can we have an extra background? We're going to have a back, uh, an extra screen. Sorry, that instead of just saying choose your background, it's going to let you select between 
change your background or change your character. So let's have change your and then two buttons to choose between character for your background. There we go. And then having had that, we've got the two options, which is the choose your background one and also your choose your character options. So let's pop those in. And we're going to have choose your character. And then I have my different options. So I've got my cat. I've got my little bird. I've got my pony and I had my little dog ear. There we go. Looks a bit like a pig. <laughs> um, never mind, I'm sure your designs look better than mine. And then I have choose your colour. And we can have I'm actually going to change this design slightly. I'm going to use like a grid with the four different colours in it. I think that will look better like that. And now I don't have enough screens to do the two last ones. I'm going to have my do you want to quit. Um, I think I'm going to do do you want to quit because I'm going to assume that once you've selected it, you're quite happy and you'll go back to the menu. And then if you don't want to keep that colour, you could just go back through and change, make the changes rather than having a specific do you want uh, do you want to keep it. But we're going to have a do you want to quit? There we go. So there is all of my screens and how they um, interact with each other. Let's add that in. So this goes into one, two, or three, depending on the note that's played. The change your character comes from clicking on that. The character selection from there, that one from there. And then do you want to quit happens as a result of getting the correct note played. There we go. So there is my design and my paper prototype finished. I've just done it in pencil and I'm not going to colour it in right now because I, I'm aware that I don't have a great deal of time left. Um, but obviously you would do. So spend time colouring it in, um, make it looking as make it look as nice as your initial idea design sheet. Um, but get it really looking good because the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to pitch this prototype. So if you do need to pause it to colour it in, which I'm guessing that probably most of you will do, feel free to do that now. And then once you're ready, um, press play to join us and finish off the very last part of the workshop by pitching your design ideas. Okay, so I'm gonna be um, carrying on now. So if you do need to um, keep, pop the pause on, do that now, otherwise we're carrying on. So make sure that you're ready to carry on with me as we look at the last part of today's workshop. Okay, so what you're going to do now as your last part is you're going to prepare your pitch. So a pitch is what we call the presentation that you make to people who might be willing to invest or give you money to make your prototype. So in this, you need to discuss what you've learnt, a little demo of your prototype, and I just mean that by um, showing your paper prototype, and then you might want to compare your app with the original idea that you started with. So that means going right back to your very first um, design sheet that you did in the workshop part one and just compare it to what you initially said you were going to have. So in your pitch, you will need to talk about, as I said, what you've learnt. You're going to do a demo of your prototype with your paper prototype, obviously all coloured in, looking fantastic. And then you can compare it to your initial ideas sheet and talk about what things you kept, what things you got rid of and what um, changes you made to make it really, really appropriate and, and um, best suited to the audience that you've identified. If you want to, what you could do is actually put this in a PowerPoint 
or a bit of presentation software. Um, it's completely up, up to you how you want to do your uh, pitch. If you prefer to just do it by talking about it and showing your designs, that's also absolutely fine. Generally, pitches will be done using some sort of presentation software though. So you might want to open a PowerPoint or a presentation, um, take some pictures of your paper prototype designs and put them into a PowerPoint or a presentation to um, illustrate your ideas and present what you've actually created. Now, as usual, if you have do this and you actually prepare your pitch and you want to share that with us, we'd absolutely love to see it. So if you do that, please do share it with us either on Facebook or on Twitter, and I'll talk about how you can do that a bit later. So once you've got your pitch prepared, either using the paper prototype or actually on a computer, once you've got that, you're going to be coming into the Dragon's Den. So if you don't know what the da Dragon's Den is, it's a TV show where you uh, where people actually come and they pre prepare a pitch and they talk about their idea and they pitch it to five dragons um, who have a lot of money and they're willing to invest money in prototype ideas that can then be taken to uh, markets and actually sold to people in the real world. So um, the idea is that you prepare your pitch, you share it to the dragons and then they decide whether or not they would invest in your idea. So if you fancy it and you want to pop your pitch over to us, do that and we can do a little yes or no as well, whether or not we think your uh, your prototype is a great idea and whether we it could be carried forward um, and actually potentially sold in the real world. Um, just as like an idea of it though, obviously. We, are, we, don't, we aren't able to invest in your um, idea, but maybe you wanna do your little pitch and we'd have a look at it and see whether we like your idea or not. Right, so if you've finished up your idea and you want to continue with the idea of developing apps, um, there's a few different things that you can do. You could head over to the Apps for Good website, which is where a lot of our initial ideas for this um, workshop came from, and we actually worked with them together on this workshop. Go to appsforgood.org um, and go and have a look at their courses because there are lots of different courses that they do for coming up with app ideas. And I'll quickly just show you what um, some of these look like now. So I'm gonna head over onto the internet, so bear with me a moment while I do that. And I'm gonna head onto the Apps for Good website. And I'm just gonna show you some of the things that you can do over on that website. So let me just pop onto my desktop so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna to go to Apps for Good. So just pop in Apps for Good in your search, um, go to their website, Apps for Good, there it is there. And you can go to their courses in there, it's completely free. And you can have a go at a few different ideas um, on their courses and just wait for that to load and I can very quickly talk to you about that. So there are lots of different things you can do, There's some home study courses um, for app development using App Lab. So actually taking your idea and developing it further by actually creating a digital prototype. Um, you can do more of designing an app paper based a little bit like we've done today um, if you want to. Um, and you can also look at a little bit about machine learning. That's something that actually is um, an example of a type of algorithm that's used in apps. So you might want to find out a bit more about machine learning and how that's used in apps. So that's one option of what you could potentially do with your uh, work so far if you wanted to carry on with it. Also, other option, if you um, want to start to work on a digital version of your app, the other thing that you could do is you could use some software to create an electronic version. Um, and there are three ideas, Just there are obviously lots of different ways that you can do this, but three ideas that I can put forward to you are AppShed, App Inventor, or even Construct 3, which we have also used for making games previously. I'll very quickly give you a very quick tour of those three options. Um, if you would like to know a little bit more. All three of those I've chosen purposely because you can use the free version of them to have a go at doing some of these um, like initial idea designs of apps. So this is App Inventor. It's made by the same people that make Scratch. Um, you can go in there and have a go at creating an app in there. Um, app Shed, you wanna use the free version and you can go in there and design apps as well. There are paid for versions and they do some quite cool stuff on their paid for versions as well, but have a look at the free version if you're interested in taking your design ideas further. Or you can go on to um, Construct 3, which we use for making games, and um, you can also make apps in Construct 3 as well. And you can use some of the ideas that we've done so far in the part baked games workshops that will help you with using Construct 3. In, um, 
interestingly if you like constructs 3 and you like making games our next workshop is based around making games i'll talk a bit more about that in a moment so there are three options if you wanted to take it further and actually do a proper digital version of your app okay so that is pretty much our workshop done for today. So very well done. In this workshop, you've learned about the structure of an app and how to apply this to your own design. You've also learned how to design an a paper prototype that meets the needs of your user. And you've had a little look at selecting and using digital schools to prepare a pitch. And we talked a little bit about using PowerPoint as an option for doing that or any presentation software. And we talked about how you could take photos of your um, design ideas and put it into a presentation and actually then pitch your idea to an audience. Um, that is up in a day part two. Um, I'm going to head on over to the chat if, in case anyone has any questions as usual. So if you have any questions for me, please pop them in the chat now because I'm going to be looking for those while I do a quick sneaky peek on what we're going to be doing next time. So pop the questions in if you do have any. But while you're doing that, I'm going to very quickly talk to you about our next workshop, which is Crazy Mazes. So as I said earlier, when we had a quick look at Construct 3 as an option, for designing apps I said that the next workshop is going to be making games and it's going to be built in Construct 3 so we're going to be making a maze game which if you uh, aren't sure what a maze game looked like you might want to go and check out a version of Pac-Man um, as an example of what a maze game looks like and we're going to be using Construct 3 to build a maze game so that's what we're going to be doing next time if you are able to join us. So as usual, part one will be on Tuesday. That will be completely unplugged, meaning you don't need any technology apart from something to vi uh, watch the video on. And then part two will be on Friday. Both parts are at 11 a.m. Uh, British Standard Time. And um, we'll be actually building the design of the game in Construct 3 in part two. So that is what we're going to be doing. So please do join us for either of those if you want to. Um, I haven't got any questions in the chat. So in that case, I'm going to sign off for today. Um, so all that leaves me to say is thank you very, very much for taking part in today's workshop. I hope that you've enjoyed it. If you've enjoyed this workshop, check out our YouTube channel for more follow, follow along activities. If you've got any questions or feedback for me, please email dsh at uk.org.uk. Now, we'd love to see you learning computing at home with Digital Schoolhouse. Parents and guardians, please feel free to share any images or videos using the hashtag computing at home on Twitter or on Facebook. So if you did prepare your pitch, we'd love to see those. Please do send them over to us. Also, if um, for those of you who love writing, Digital Schoolhouse has launched a creative writing competition, which you can find more information about on our website. If you are the parent of a primary aged pupil and are interested in finding out about Digital Schoolhouse and how they can work with your child's school, you can find out more about our programme on our website, digitalschoolhouse.org.uk. You can find our contact information in the section below or at the end of this video. Lastly, I wanted to say a huge well done for taking part today. I'm Estelle and I look forward to seeing you next time.